I'm going to show you a way to do a uh, mask using type as the uh, mask with a uh, image behind. And so here I am with my uh, with my type and with my with my uh, image below. And I need to adjust my type just a little bit. I'm going to select all of the type and I'm going to make sure that I make it as bold as I can get it. And then I'm going to go to my um, to my character panel and make that nice tight letter spacing. So I'm going to adjust right here. That's a little bit too tight. There we go. Get it uh, a little bigger maybe. Maybe something like that. Okay. And um, I've got the type centered. I've got the type bold. And maybe change the uh, tracking between the letters just a little bit so they're nice and tight. That might let me get the type a little bit bigger. Okay. Remember, you can just scrub across those and make them uh, make them make them wider, make them uh, make them tighter, do all the stuff you do just by scrubbing across those little uh, adjustments there. You can see how that works. Okay. All right, now I want to put the uh, type below the background. I'm going to unlock the background layer and I'll move the type so it's behind. Okay. Then to, to make the type go into the lettering, you simply place the cursor right here, press the Option key, and the balloon will fill the type below. Now, that's not a real great uh, example here, but you can see the colors coming through. And there's the uh, balloon in the background. You can press Option and bring it back, and you just and that's how you fill type with uh, with uh, with uh, an image. You know, you can you can you still can adjust this and make and maybe make it better if you uh, select the type and go to a different font. Let's try something that's a lot bolder, okay, and maybe uh, a lot bigger. And I think I'll scale it horizontal or scale it vertically as well. Okay. Now you're beginning to see some of the image of the balloon in there behind. And that actually makes it more interesting to look at. Now I still need to uh, I still need to change it up here a little bit so that I can so I can see the edge of the word. And maybe uh, Tap that over. Okay, and you can also uh, improve the reading a little bit if you if you uh, add uh, background color behind it. Okay, so I'm going to do that next. Just going to add some color in the background. Maybe pick off the red of the balloon, bring this down below the type, and you can see uh, kind of defining that edge a little bit better even still. Now you, you just have to kind of keep messing with this until you get the effect that you want. And if I had another word in there maybe, the next to the word the, and, and it's still it's still totally editable. You can you can click on the cursor. Uh, how about we need another word here. I'll put in the word new. New Albuquerque Balloon Festival. Okay, and you can see I'm getting there. It's starting to get there. It's a little bit better. I can uh, turn on my transform controls here around my type. and I can maybe try to get a little bit more scale out of these 
until I can see the top of the balloon. Yeah, maybe tap it back over this way. And now you're really starting to see the uh, shape of the balloon in behind there. Okay, and including the gondola now. Now I've picked a type font that will hold up to this kind of really crazy stretching. Okay, you want to try to kind of make sure of that too. I can crop this down, I think it'll strengthen it a little bit too. Just like that. Okay. And if you're not real crazy about the color, remember it's completely editable. You can try a different color until you get something that you like even better. Okay, and you just have to keep uh, messing with it till you get something that you really like. Now, you'll want to do a save here and save as and uh, bring in the uh, other balloon. You can do that. I'll just go ahead and do that real quick. Save as. We'll call this one uh, masking. All right, it's called a clipping mask. Let's call it that. Okay, make sure it goes in the right spot. Okay, and now that you've got the name change, you'll be able to uh, bring in the original image again. So if you go back to File and Open Recent, you can go to the Hot Air Balloon. Let's see why I'm not getting the Hot Air Balloon. There we go. And select All and copy and close and then just come over here and paste it in now I've got the uh, original in there it came in in an odd place so I'm going to move it uh, maybe down here to the bottom okay, that may not make it a little easier to work with okay and I'll use my crop tool and add my background I want to be careful here because I don't want to delete any part of the picture. Okay, and that uh, ah, the background is uh, is extending along with it. I'll have to mask that. Okay, but here's my original image. I'll I'll uh, I'll be able to select. Tell you what, I'm just going to select this and this and move it over. Turn off my auto select. I should be able to move that over. Okay. Then I will uh, select this one and I'll scale it down so it sort of matches the size of the other one. Maybe something like this. Now I'll turn my color back on commit and turn my color back on and I can I can eliminate this uh, I can eliminate this background by using this mask right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mask I'm going to use my rectangular rectangular uh, marquee and I'll just draw a little marquee right here I think it went to the edge like that okay, maybe shave a little bit off of this side okay now I'm on the mask okay I'll inverse and we'll paint it out like we've done before use the brush and some black paint here and I can get rid of this okay then I'll need a, another color to provide for my background so I'll add that in and I think probably just white will work good here. Bring that down so it's below the other one there. It inherited that mask. You don't really need the mask here. You can delete that layer mask because it's not really doing anything. Now I'll select here and, and uh, edge this guy up just a bit so it kind of squares up with the other one. 
and maybe change the scale of it just a little bit more so it's about the same size. I can crop one more time, bring in my margin. And let's see, it would be nice to also have the type on here. So I wonder if I could do this. I'll select the type. It's part of a mask, it's part of a, a clipping mask item. But if I just do a command J, so now I've got two of those. I'm going to take this bottom one and I will uh, again turn off my auto select and see if I can just drag this over. There it is. Okay. And you can make a kind of an example out of that to show how, how that was done. It's a little, a little smaller here, maybe. Anyway, you'll you'll be able to make that look really close to the example on the on the right. Okay, and uh, you could also do it this way. I just was thinking maybe this would be even better. I'll go ahead and extend my crop out this way. This might actually look better. And take the uh, take the type and just bring it over as another example. And again, we'll have to kind of mess with this uh, mask a little bit to make sure that it's not showing yellow over here. That might be a good way to do it. That way you can kind of see the two things that were involved in making the uh, composite. Now that color is kind of not exactly where I'm wanting it, so I can I think I'll go back in and maybe change that. Tell you what, I'll maybe use a swatch instead. Hold that. Let me do that. Yeah. That's better. Okay. So there's a maybe a good way to do that. You might still have some other ideas as well to make that. Whoops. Get my mask mixed up here. Just trying to move my type over. There we go. Add your caption. Rename your layers. And you'll have a really pretty... Uh, Clipping mask example.